Hi, my name is Tom and I've been framing out my basement over the last month or so. What I've been doing is putting in a wood stud frame a couple inches off my cinder block walls. I'll eventually put some insulation in there. But I've been putting in my wood studs not with nails, but rather with screws. Now, screws are a little slower to use, but they're a little more precise. And because I'm not a professional carpenter and I'm not very good at nailing in things, I'm much better off using screws. I'm going to take you through the steps of how to screw in a wood stud. Okay, first things first. Uh, two quick things I've already done. I've put in a top plate up here, and this is just a 2x4 that's been run across, has been uh, screwed into the joists at different intervals. And I've also put in a bottom plate, uh, and that is actually uh, pressure treated wood, just in case it's wet. I have a French drain along the side there. So I want to make sure that I still have a spot for a little bit of moisture if I need it. I, my basement is typically very, very dry. Uh, I have a couple little marks here and there, but I have a dehumidifier and I've never had any real standing water. Knock on wood. So what I'm going to do is now that I have my, my top plate and my bottom plate in place, um, they're attached. I'll cover those at another time. I'm going to go ahead and start putting in wood studs between them. And I currently already have a couple in place. I'm going to show you how I'm going to put this one in next. First step is to measure from the bottom plate up to the top plate. So I grab my tape measure, a nice uh, stiff metal tape measure, and get it just straight, get it as even as I can, and I go up, and go right to the edge, and it looks like I'm just shy of 81 inches, looks like 80 and 3 quarters perhaps a little more than that. So 80 and 3 quarters is where I'm going to be. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take one of my 8 foot 2 by 4s and I'm going to cut them down just so it'll fit right there in that measurement. So here I am at my saw. Uh, I have my 2 by 4 in place and I'm going to simply measure out 80 and 3 quarters. Make sure that's again pretty straight. 80 and 3 quarters, let's see here, 80 and a half, there's 3 quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and put a mark in there, just on the ruler, it doesn't have to be real precise. This has to be larger than what I need, I can always cut off if I have to. Uh, if I make it too short, then I'm kind of out of luck, uh, but there are tricks to that. Alright, so uh, if I make it too short, just so you know, I can go ahead and uh, shim it up. When I, before I attach it, as long as it's not too short. Uh, an eighth of an inch here and there, a sixteenth of an inch, I can usually deal with any more than that. You gotta start over. So what I'm gonna do, line this up right on the, right on the line there. Uh, sometimes I look at my, uh, sometimes I look at my two by fours and I look at both sides. Uh, Cause I'm eight, I have eight foot boards and I'm actually cutting off about 14, 15 inches of each one. I'll look at both sides, and I'll, if, I, if one of the corners is beat up, one of the sides is beat up, I'll go ahead and I'll use that side to cut off and throw away. So one side's going to end up being scrapped, and the other side's going to end up being used. Uh, let's see here. It looks like I'm, I'm straight. I'm level. How's that looking? Pretty good. Let me move it a, one more notch down. Okay, here we go. put it in place now okay cut my board and now I'm gonna place it in so I'm gonna put this right on rest this right on the uh, bottom plate and oh, now you notice it's a little bit tight but that's okay here's where a hammer actually does come in handy what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of slide it in a little bit that's not too bad I actually like to have the studs nice and tight in here because it makes it easier to go ahead and position, to line up, to level, and even screw them in if they're actually tight. If they're loose and they're sliding around, and I have to go ahead and drill a screw into it while it's holding it and it's kind of bobbling around, it's actually harder to work with. Uh, I'll sometimes even shim it up a little bit to kind of keep that board from, from moving while it's in place. So right now I'm a little bit tight, but that's okay. I'm gonna kick that in there, use my hammer. Now it's, oops, not quite. Now it's fairly flat face there. 
and it's level where it's even with the with the joists. But there we go. I'm gonna take my level. I'm gonna make sure I'm going okay. I say, oh gee, let's see here. I have to move this over a little bit. So again, I just take my hammer, bang it over a little bit. I can bang back and forth until I get it nice and level. And almost there. Looking pretty good. Let's check this way. That's dead on. Uh, a little bit twisted. I can kind of see that with an eyeball here. Okay, uh, it looks like I am fairly level up and down, and I'm fairly level uh, back and forth with the top plate and the bottom plate. So, I can now walk away. I can come back to this later. This does nice and tight, but I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drill some holes and put screws in. Okay. Uh, I went ahead and I, I placed a, a light off to the side just so you can kind of see what I'm going to be doing up here. Uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to screw this in. The trick is screwing it into the stud in a way that uh, it'll secure it, but also in a way that you can actually easily get to it. I can't screw from the top, obviously, because I have a joist up here. And I really can't screw from the bottom because it's right here, so it's kind of a square joint. It's kind of a cross joint. So if for cases like this, what you want to do is you want to do something called toenailing. And all it really is means is you're going to go in diagonally. Um, with a nail, I could very easily tap a nail in here and kind of go up diagonally. I'm going to do the same thing with a screw. But this is where screws get a little slower. Because you have to kind of pre-drill the hole for screws. Um, if you don't, you risk a very high chance of splitting the, uh, splitting the wood. Especially if you're somewhere near the edge of the, of the, edge of the wood, which I will be. So here's why I go ahead and do it. Here's my electric drill with a drill bit. What I will do is I'm gonna just kind of put up right against that stud. I'm about uh, about an inch or so down, and I'm gonna drill a little, just a little indent there. I'm gonna do a second one about right here, about an inch in and an inch down. That's all I'm gonna do now. I do that for a reason. I do that because for me, trying to drive a drill bit diagonally on a on a piece of wood like this it bobbles all over the place it kind of jumps around so what i do is i put a little kind of little indent there now when i place my drill bit there it should stay pretty much in place and now i'm going to kind of drill up and try to get about a 45 degree angle but i want to try to get the bit to go through both the stud and then into the uh, top plate as well so here we go One, two. Now, again, because my stud is nice and tight, it's really easy to do this. It's not going to go anywhere. I can drill with, take, I can take my time with the whole thing, uh, not rush it, and I don't have to worry about it bobbling around as I'm drilling the hole. So now I have a I have a, a little speed clip here. It helps make it easier to drip the, the bits in and out. Uh, I'm going to actually be using, just so you know, uh, I'm actually using construction screws. These are actually exterior construction screws. It's what I had. Uh, we're kind of in a COVID-19 lockdown right now, so it's hard to get more supplies very easily. We're trying not to go out a whole lot. Uh, so I'm just going to be using these one pound coated driver screws. Uh, with construction screws, I also have some of these I can use as well. Same idea. Uh, I typically go with 3-inch construction screws for most of my framing. Uh, a lot of them have either a, uh, this is a Phillips head. They're okay. I have better luck with the star-shaped heads. So this is a star-shaped head. Uh, but again, it's an exterior screw. It's three, uh, it's 3 inches, but it's a construction screw. It will be fine for this sort of thing where I'm basically just holding studs into place. So here we go. My hole is ready to go. And I drill away. Here we go. One.
and two. So you always want to put two in. You don't want to put one. If you put one in, the board can still twist a little bit back and forth. So you want to put two in to kind of hold it in place to keep it from twisting. And now that's nice and secure. Now I'm going to go ahead and repeat the procedure on the bottom plate. Here we go again. I drill my, my two quick guide holes, my indents. Just enough to hold the bit. Go down at an angle. Screw bit in, put the screws in. And we're good. It's okay if they stick out a tiny bit there, that's fine. Uh, the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to put the screws in this side because this side is where your uh, facing, your drywall or your paneling is going to lay. And if you have any screw heads that are sticking out halfway, then your paneling or your, or your drywall will kind of bulge over that. So you want to keep this face as smooth as possible and you want to put your screws into the side. And there we go. So again, basic idea, measure the distance between your top plate and your bottom plate. Go ahead and cut your wood. Try to get it a little bit tight. Put in your stud, drill your, your guide holes, drill your angle, and then put your screws in. Once you actually get good at this, you can put a, a stud in in about, uh, probably about 10, 12 minutes at the most for each one. So it means you can pop out four, five, six an hour. Uh, it doesn't seem like a lot, but again, I'm not in any rush. I'm kind of taking my time. All my studs are straight and even. I don't have any smashed fingers. In fact, all through this video, I keep looking at my finger right here at the Band-Aid. I got that from smashing it with a hammer because I was trying to nail in a uh, electrical box. And that had a nail. It was already built in, so I just hammered it, and sure enough, I hit my finger. So uh, this is actually a, a great way to put studs in. They're nice and strong. And nice and easy. You don't need a whole lot of skill. You don't have to be good with a hammer. You don't have to worry about bending nails. Screwing in wood studs is actually a pretty easy and pretty viable option for most handy homeowners.